it's funny like you probably saw the rodeo video where we had the cyber truck right there and people are just coming up to the truck and you got ferraris lamborghinis porsches driving by us and no one cares about any of that but this cyber truck this metal refrigerator sitting on the side of the street everybody just flocks to it so it's funny i recently chatted with dennis from the youtube channel dennis cw who owns an all-wheel drive foundation series cyber truck and he's owned this truck for around a month or so and I was able to sit down, chat with him about his experience in owning the truck so far. And I wanna share some of the highlights from that conversation. I will put a link in the video description to Dennis's YouTube channel. And I definitely recommend that you go over and subscribe to his channel. He has a lot of great Cybertruck content already and a lot of exciting content coming. And I especially love all the reaction videos that he's been posting of the general public reacting to the Tesla Cybertruck. With that being said, let's go ahead and dive into this conversation. And I want to start off with Dennis's response to my question about how the public is reacting to the Cybertruck. Definitely. It's it's funny. It's uh, confusion, excitement. We've definitely run into people that have no idea what it is. And of course, we run into people that know exactly what it is. And uh, everybody's got their phones out. People will even go to, to certain limits to get a, try and get a picture like, uh, there's one guy that was driving on the highway and just stuck their phone out from the <laughs> top of the sunroof and was just trying to capture it however they could. Uh, but definitely excitement and confusion. That's like the two main thoughts that we run into. It's funny, like you probably saw the Rodeo video where we had the cyber truck right there and people are just coming up to the truck and you got Ferraris, Lamborghinis, Porsches driving by us and no one cares about any of that. But this cyber truck, this metal refrigerator sitting on the side of the street, everybody just flocks to it. So it's funny. Okay, beyond the general public's reaction to the Cybertruck, I asked Dennis about his reaction to the Cybertruck's four-wheel steering and its steer-by-wire system. As you likely know, a steer-by-wire system has no mechanical linkage between the steering squircle, the square circle um, steering wheel, and the exterior car wheels. So there's no mechanical connection there with the steer-by-wire system. However, the system will adjust, it has a variable steering ratio, so if you're going fast down the highway, the steering angle is less aggressive. However, when you're going slow, the angle is a lot more aggressive. This works out really well. And also the truck's four-wheel steering makes even a larger truck like the Cybertruck easier to maneuver and gives it a tighter turning radius. Here's what Dennis had to say about these two features. I absolutely love it. It definitely takes getting used to right off the bat. Uh, you have to figure out how to steer uh, and the aggressiveness of it. But once you get used to it and uh, it's 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 really nice because the truck is big. It's long. It's a big vehicle, especially living in metropolitan areas. But once you get used to the steer bar wire, you kind of with the low effort of how you drive, uh, because like any minuscule turn, it like it helps you make that turn. And also it really comes in handy with like parallel parking because you can make really small adjustments to get really close to the curb uh, with both wheels. And so it's really nice actually with parallel parking. Dennis took delivery of the Cybertruck in Austin, Texas, and then had to drive that truck all the way back to California where he lives. So he was able to experience a pretty good long road trip and of course driving on the highway. And while driving on the highway, Dennis mentioned that the truck feels really solid on the highway. Here's what Dennis had to say on this topic. I don't know if it's like the truck or the weight of it or the size, or maybe it's calibration of the steer by wire. But one thing I noticed right off the bat is the truck feels really solid when you're driving on the highway. Like you've probably driven through country roads or deserts where you get blown around sometimes from the wind. But in that road trip, we felt super solid the whole time. And I don't know if it was like the steer by wire, just like calibrating like those, the bumps of the car, but it just felt like we were just cutting through the air uh, at like solid drive the whole time. There are multiple reasons why I believe the truck feels so solid on the highway. The first comes down to the truck's air suspension system, which does smooth out the ride a lot. Secondly, the truck does have 4680 batteries with a structural battery pack and a structural battery pack does help stiffen up the ride. In addition to that, the truck's exoskeleton, the stainless steel exterior also gives the truck a good amount of rigidity. And then you mix that with the steer by wire and the four wheel steering. And that really adds up to a very good highway driving vehicle. Now we'll talk about range here shortly. The truck's really not going to be a great truck 
for long distance travel right now with the current amount of range and uh, especially if you have cold weather or you're towing anything. But the truck feels very solid and drives very well. With that being said, I asked Dennis about his experience driving the truck during the 1300 mile or so road trip from Austin, Texas to California. And here's what he had to say. It was an interesting experience. I don't think I'll ever do it again. I think that trip is supposed to take 20 hours, a straight shot from Austin to California. But because of how many supercharging stops we had to go to, uh, it bumped it all the way to like 27 hours. I think it was like 12 plus supercharging stops. And also Texas and New Mexico and Arizona, it was colder at night. So the efficiency of the truck was not doing well in that first you know, drive. And I was getting pretty scared too as well because it was looking like 600, 700, 800 watt hours tomorrow. I thought something was wrong. And then finally, after we got back to California with warmer temperatures and maybe the car had to recalibrate, now we're getting, finally getting down to like that 400 watt hours per mile, which is much better than what it was before efficiency wise. So the truck is very finicky. Learning from the road trip, you have to drive with the tonneau cover closed for aerodynamics. You can't go over... 70 to 75 miles an hour. I mean, but that's like any Tesla, right? Like you can't really go over 75 anyways, or else you're going to start deplete, depleting the battery. But I think we've been driving around for the past week and um, we're getting like 270, 280, according to the calculations of the watt hour per mile. So still good. And we're on the 22 inch rims now. Uh, but I think once we go back to like the 20s or even go smaller, then it would be definitely more efficient. Next, I asked about Dennis's experience supercharging the Cybertruck, and here's what he had to say. Yeah, so uh, we haven't really been supercharging in LA too much, but in that road trip, we were only able to get like 150 kilowatt chargers for the most of them. And at each stop, it was like 40 to 50 minutes each time. So, which was good for us because we could take naps or rest because we're driving through the night. Um, but uh, getting back into LA, I just supercharged yesterday and I was able to get up to 250 kilowatts. And I think we went from 10% to about 65% in about 30 minutes. Uh, I think if it were the rough numbers there. I did recently put out a video talking about Cybertruck charging speeds. And of course, according to Lars Moravi, the Cybertruck, when connected to a V4 Tesla supercharger that can charge it up to 350 kilowatts, that vehicle should be able to go from a 15 to 85% state of charge in around 18 to 20 minutes. So that's going to be pretty quick. However, there really aren't very many V4 superchargers available, and the ones that are available, I believe right now, are limited to 250 kilowatts, at least right now. I don't know if we've seen a Cybertruck being tested at one of these V4 superchargers, but as far as I know, they're limited to 250 kilowatts. So with that being said, when charging at a V2 or V3 supercharger, it really takes a decent amount of time to charge the Cybertruck. According to results that I talked about in that past video, supercharging results at a V3 supercharger from the YouTube channel, Our Cyber Life. When charging at a V3 supercharger, the Cybertruck takes around 45 minutes to go from say like a 14% state of charge to an 85% state of charge. So not super extremely slow, but not fast in any regard. Um, when connected to a V3 or V2 supercharger. Next, I asked Dennis what he really liked about the Cybertruck, and here's what he had to say. So favorite thing right off the bat, comfortability. Uh, it is 30%, I would say 30% more comfortable than the Model X that we currently have. And I've had all of them. I've had the three, the Y, the S, and the X, and now the Cybertruck. And it's definitely 30% more comfortable. And I think what com to get to that comfortability, it's the ride height. Because it sits so tall, like almost like a real truck, uh, it you get you add a little bit more of like being able to you know, see what the road is. Uh, second thing I really like, I think just like the confidence of the durability of it, um, like stainless steel, as much as I rag on it about fingerprints as other people do, uh, I, you know, I like that you can just go anywhere and not have to worry about dings and things like that. Of course, right now it's wrapped red, uh, but, uh, you know, I don't think it's going to be wrapped red forever. And I want to see like, you know, going back to like the stainless and things like that. And then the third thing is steer by wire. Uh, for sure. And you kind of, it makes you wonder, like, I wish every Tesla or every vehicle had steer bar wire once you get used to it, uh, because it's just that much less effort each time you steer somewhere that, and just makes driving a lot more easier. As cool as the Cybertruck is, of course, no vehicle is perfect. And so here are some of the things that Dennis dislikes about the Cybertruck. 
Yeah, so uh, fingerprints, uh, I, I I laugh about it, but uh, you know it could be for people that have OCD and things like that, they're going to hate it uh, for sure. The doors, I mean, it comes with the territory of being a stainless steel truck, but uh, the doors can be heavy for like significant others, kids, uh, and things like that. And uh, it just feels like maybe the interior and the plastics on the exterior are not as durable. I don't know. I don't know how long it's going to, you know, fare with like environmental things and things like that, especially like the bed truck uh, and things like that. So we'll see. But I'm putting it through the test because I'm not trying to baby it at all. And so we'll see how it actually uh, fares with elements. Kind of the fourth thing, which it doesn't bug me as much, but it, it's just weird, like jumping from like, you know, seeing real trucks versus cyber trucks. Uh, the A pillar is a big A pillar. Whereas like TRXs and F-150s, you, you don't, it, it's like, there's no blind spots in those trucks because they kind of knew, they understand that stuff. But in the Tesla, it, it's kind of blocking that big A pillar in the, the side, on the left side and passenger and driver side. I will put a link down below in the video description to Dennis's YouTube channel. And I definitely recommend you go check that out for great Cybertruck content. And he has a lot of exciting videos planned coming up and great tests. And I definitely recommend you go check that out and some of the reaction videos as well. I also want to say once again, thank you to Dennis for taking time to answer my questions. And thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.